Hello my friends, today I am the red-faced, burnt-faced electric viking. Welcome to the channel, great to see you. Get straight into it here. Tesla's delivery numbers from Gigafactory Shanghai were lower than I expected, probably lower than you expected as well. Key reason for that is that Tesla is trying to increase its margins. It's a constant, well it's a constant effort from Tesla to beat the competition when it comes to margins about how much profit you make per car. So Tesla is looking at changing what they do. They've already started. Things have already started. They've already started to do things very differently to the way that they did them in the past, which makes sense. Why do things the same way and have that not really work in your favor? The reality is, Tesla's monthly deliveries are not really that important. What's important is overall deliveries for the entire year, profitability per car, and making more cars. Are they making more cars? Absolutely. Why are Tesla's delivery numbers lower for the month of September in China than what we expected, and lower than I expected, clearly, considering their production capacity right now is at about 100, well, nearly 100,000 per month because there are literally thousands and thousands of Tesla vehicles right now sitting at Shanghai's port waiting to be shipped. Tesla didn't want to ship them out or deliver them to customers having to pay the kind of shipping rates that they were before. So basically Tesla is saving money here by not rush shipping products, by actually looking at things in more of a strategic way. Who needs the cars the most? Where are the biggest waiting times? Australia, yeah? other countries around the world. Clearly in China, right, the wait time now is only about one or two weeks, depending on the model of car. But there's other countries around the world where the wait time is nearly a year still. So clearly Tesla are thinking very much strategically here and thinking, how can we actually give customers the best experience? How can we make the most profit? Let's forget about this whole quarterly delivery stuff. It doesn't really matter. Monthly deliveries, it doesn't really matter. What matters is strategically assessing the market and doing what makes the most logical sense. And clearly in the past, Tesla have done that with most things, not so much with their quarterly figures. You know, they have this quarterly rush, try to ship the vehicles out really fast. And then what happens is the company does struggle to some degree. They've got to hire in new people, casuals. They've got to get people to help. It's a big, big, big rush. Tesla is moving away from that. It's looking at doing things in a much more logical way and just ignoring this whole quarterly thing, monthly sales thing, really focusing on strategy. I think this is one of their best decisions for a long time. Moving away from this whole investor-driven news media cycle, which is just, it's not going to produce a good outcome for the company. It's not going to produce the outcome that's going to lead to selling 10 to 20 million cars per year. How do they get to that position? by doing things very intelligently, very strategically. All that said, Tesla did hit a record in September for China. They sold, or they delivered, 83,135 vehicles over the month. Prior to September, Tesla China's best-selling month was in June before they partially shut the factory down in order to ramp production, to basically increase production line capacity. In that month, Tesla delivered 79,000 vehicles, or 78,906, and with its 83,135 delivered in September, Tesla China's wholesale figures are an increase of 48.5% year over year and an 8% increase month over month. For context, Tesla sold 78,906 cars from China in June, and the company sold 76,965 vehicles in August of 2022. August numbers went down a little bit because Tesla shut production lines down for a little while in order to change them so they could increase capacity on those production lines. So what are Tesla planning to do for the final three months of this year? Their goal apparently is 266,500 cars in the fourth quarter of 2022. So they wanna deliver that many cars to customers. Not necessarily produce that many, I wanna guess they're gonna be producing more than that but at least deliver that many cars directly into the hands of customers. This would help Tesla achieve its goal of a 50% production delivery increase in 2022 versus 2021. So what does that mean per month? Well, that means Tesla is saying per month, they're gonna average 89,000 production vehicles, vehicles produced and delivered 
not just produced, but also delivered to customers over the next three months of the year, 89,000 per month. A little bit lower than what I was expecting, but there may be some other structural reason for that. I'm not really too sure. Gigafactory Shanghai produces two vehicles, of course, the Model Y and the Model 3, but it does produce different variants of those two cars. And remember, Shanghai is the place where Tesla makes money. It literally is a money printing machine, that factory, which is basically the polar opposite to Texas, to Germany, where they are literally burning money right now. So Tesla Shanghai is Tesla's cash cow. It's really what's keeping the lights on. It's what's keeping the cash flow coming in. It's what's making them the most profitable automaker per car in the world, which they are right now. Right now, the Tesla Model Y costs only 300,000 RMB in China, which means it qualifies for subsidies. That's 42,000 US dollars, 42,000 US dollars. For you guys in the US, I'm curious, if you don't have a Model Y, would you buy one if the base variant costs you 42,000 US dollars? I'm gonna guess there'd be a lot of people who would. Will that happen in the US? I actually think it will eventually. Why? Well, for example, in Europe, we have a couple of countries in Europe where the base model variant is around 42,000 US dollars as well. Of course, that's before the VAT tax, but the point is here, Tesla is capable of producing a Model Y and making a decent profit selling them at 42,000 US dollars. Because if you look at Tesla's costs, it appears as though Tesla's costs to produce the Model Y are only around 30,000 US dollars in China. The price of the Model 3 standard range in China is actually a bit cheaper than that. It's about 10% less at around 38,000 US dollars. Plus right now in China, you can actually get insurance for free. Tesla's giving $1,200 worth of insurance away when you buy a Model Y or a Model 3 sort of as an incentive to increase their actual demand for their vehicles. Remember, China is insane. There are so many electric car manufacturers, it's ludicrous. People outside of China just have no idea what's going on there. There's literally more than 50 electric car manufacturers. Most of them you haven't heard of, but some of them you have. I mean, of course, there's Neo, Xpeng, Leap Motor. There's so many companies that are ramping their electric vehicle production and that are willing to sell at a loss. They're pretty much all selling at a loss right now. BYD is the only one not selling at a loss in China. That gives you an idea of the competition. It's crazy there. But remember, that kind of competition drives what? It drives innovation. Innovation is the key reason, right, why Tesla is able to actually sell EVs at a profit and no one else really can do it. Now, there's some other incentives that Tesla is currently offering in China. I believe they're about to reduce prices as well. But those incentives include insurance subsidies, like I just said, a 0% down payment on financing lease and preferential loan rates. These programs could make vehicles like the Model Y actually get more orders in China, you know, get more deliveries in China, get more people th saying, hey, you know what, I bought a Model Y, you should go buy one too. I think that's what's gonna happen here in China. And one of the key reasons for this is the new batteries. If you haven't seen the new batteries that Tesla will be using by about the end of this year, you need to check them out. They are a significant improvement and these are the batteries you're going to see in you know, standard models around the world, which is more than 50% of Tesla's global vehicle production is the standard model using the LFP batteries. That's why this is such a game changer. If you haven't seen that video, I'll put a link in the description below to the new M3P batteries. It's going to allow Tesla to put in smaller battery packs and still get longer range. But the battery packs actually cost the same exact amount of money per cell, which is crazy. Thanks for watching. Let me know your thoughts in the comment section below. Sorry about the tomato face and have a great day. I'll see you again on the next video.